25 years ago, Highcrest staff came together and opened a new school. They began traditions that continue through today. Traditions such as Freaky Friday, the variety show, field day, and the outdoor spring concert on the lawn have set Highcrest apart as a wonderful space to grow and learn since its inception. Students thrived in this new building and had so much fun as they learned the essentials of fifth and sixth grade. In the year 2000, Mr. Dan Toomey and Mrs. or Senora Julie Ward partnered with Highcrest principal, Dr. Fry, and assistant principal, Ms. Andrea Stein, to spearhead the construction of a time capsule. It was meant to stay in the HMS lobby for 20 years with instructions to be opened in 2020, this year. While it was in the lobby for many years, it migrated to one of our classrooms where it has lived until today. Many of Dr. Heidi's students, and this year, Ms. Bachman's students, have had the opportunity to use the time capsule to help them deliver a report or present information to the class. <laughs> for many years, the, in the students in this classroom have been excited and interested to see what's inside. So here we are today, excited to see what the students of HMS left us 20 years ago. And we are looking forward to continuing another tradition that was created in those early Highcrest years. Before we take a look at some of our favorite Highcrest memories, I'd like to invite Dr. Kremiscoli to the podium to just say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. What a beautiful day we have for this celebration. I have to say, 20 years ago, we never would have imagined we'd be in the place we are today. 20 years ago, we could not have fathomed the kind of learning experiences that we are having today. We did not have all of the technology that helps us these days, but we also didn't have the life experiences that we are all enduring and learning from within 2020. The one thing that remains true and the same is our commitment to helping students learn and grow. And here at Highcrest Middle School, we are so very proud of our students and of the community that supports us to be so successful. So I thank everyone for coming out to celebrate with us today. I can't wait to see what's inside of the time capsule but even more importantly, I can't wait to see what 20 years from now, our friends might be saying about what they find in our time capsule. So thank you for helping us. Thank you for supporting the mission of Highcrest Middle School in District 39. And thank you for being here today to celebrate with us. Let's get started. Thank you. All right. Um, and just for those that are here, we've had some participants raise their hands and now we're up to close to 150. And one of those participants was Brad Butts. So big shout out to Brad Butts, our former uh, orchestra teacher. He's watching online. Um, anyway, so now I am going to share my screen with you, speaking of technology, um, to show a video that we've made. It's a little long, but um, it has lots of great memories and lots of great uh, experience shared by people who were here 25 years ago. I was at Highcrest from 1995 when it reopened until 2000 when I had my twins. Um, here's a quick memory from that time. We were given uh, one or maybe two keys that we could check out if we wanted to come in on the weekend to work. So 15 people shared one or two keys. So somebody would check it out. And then if someone was coming in, they would have to go around to uh, that person's window and knock on the classroom window in order for that person to let them in. And if um, you were gonna leave before the next people came, we would hide the key outside underneath a can or on a windowsill um, so that the other person would know where it was so they could get in the building. My, how times have changed. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Jill Gontavnik and I joined Highcrest in 1999. I have so many great memories of the wonderful colleagues and amazing students from those early years and every year since. But something that really stands out about my first two years of teaching at Highcrest is that my classroom was not in the building. I was in the mobile classrooms. The mobile classrooms were amazing. The walls were fully bulletin boards from ceiling to floor, so you could staple directly into them. We also had a little dial in our classrooms that allowed us to control heat and air conditioning at all times of the day. In the first year, the mobile classrooms were connected to the main building by two long corridors that we called the airplane hallways because it always looked like you were walking to board an airplane as you were heading towards the mobiles. My second year, the mobiles were in the parking lot outside by the playground. There was an awning that went mostly from the mobiles to the main building. So in all types of weather, snow, wind, rain, you would see the teachers from the mobiles, arms loaded up with as many photocopies and as much mail and anything we needed to do inside the building as we could possibly carry, running, fighting the elements, getting to and from the mobiles to get what we needed for our kids. That weather did not stop us. But most amazingly, in the second year, as the new wing of Highcrest was being built, I had the opportunity through a committee to take a tour, along with some other teachers, of that new area that was under construction. And I remember seeing how many amazing classrooms were being built, new offices, a beautiful gym, even just really nice hallways. And it was filled with so much promise and so much excitement of what was to come for Highcrest. And my third year, they let me into the building and I got one of those classrooms and I have been so happy there ever since. They say once a hawk, always a hawk. Once a hawk, always a hawk, still a hawk. Happy, happy birthday, Highcrest. I'm Jody McCauley, or Jody Hallahan, if you knew me when we opened up Highcrest 25 years ago. And I was reflecting on that first year of Highcrest, which was pretty chaotic. And I remembered that the first week of school, the teachers were in a panic because no one had ordered chalk. We were out of chalk, which was so important back then because yes, we had chalkboards. No whiteboards and definitely no uh, smart boards. As a matter of fact, the highest uh, bit of technology I had was one desktop computer that I shared with my students. So a lot has changed. But don't worry, I made it through that first week without any chalk because I had my overhead projector transparencies. Happy birthday, Highcrest. Hi, I'm Jay Heidekat. I was a sixth grader in 1999 at Highcrest. Uh, and then actually after I graduated college, I came back, I was a teacher's assistant at the Wilmette Junior High, and now I'm teaching in Chicago. Uh, in sixth grade, I remember uh, playing a band concert on the front lawn of the school. That was really fun. Uh, I remember science got really cool in sixth grade. We actually got to light things on fire for the first time. That was very exciting. Uh, and I remember in the cafeteria for lunch having those round mini cheese pizzas. That was always the best day of the week. Um, happy to be checking back in with District 39 and uh, ready for the next time capsule. Stacy Ford and I teach Spanish at Highcrest. Back when I started in 1998, I was Senorita Bender. 
Um, I have truly loved being a part of Highcrest and working with amazing staff members and students. I'm talking to you here today from our new learning commons. And before this area was the learning commons, it was where my Spanish classroom was. And when I first started at Highcrest, this area was part parking lot and part playground. We called it the tot lot. Um, one of the fun memories I have of Highcrest is the Civil War Day reenactment um, we had in the spring. The area between Highcrest and the junior high um, would be transformed into the Civil War battlefield and there would be soldiers and all kinds of people dressed from that era. There were cannons and there were even horses. Um, and in the hallway, you would often run into Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd Lincoln. It was a very fun day. Another memory that brings a smile to my face is when I first started, the band teacher and the orchestra teacher would show up at a staff member's door on their birthday with a bass and a tuba, and they would serenade that teacher for their birthday. It was a very fun um, thing to have happen, and it was fun to see those instruments um, in the hallway. Um, happy birthday, Highcrest. It is um, a great place to be, and I am loving still being a hawk. Hey, hi, Crest Hawks. Uh, Mr. Andrews here. I was uh, hired in 1995 as a physical education teacher at Highcrest. I taught there for six years. Uh, my first job right out of college, and then I moved here to the junior high, and I've been here since then. I'm in my 26th year now at the junior high school. Crazy to think that it's been that long, and that Highcrest uh, was my first job. Things that I think about the most probably on those days are the teachers that I've met, and the friendships that I've built, and the relationships that I still have with some of the students from back then. Um, we have students who come back to the junior high and just to say hello, and we've had some that come back and referee a games of our junior high kids now. It's pretty neat to think that it's been 25 years that that school has been open. But I got to go. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm the imposter. Hi everyone, I'm Becky Lippman and I'm the principal at Central Elementary School. Um, back in the day, I actually taught fifth grade at Highcrest. And as we always say, once a hawk, always a hawk. Uh, I have some fond memories of our early days um, at Highcrest Middle School, especially the first few years of when it was created. Uh, we really came together as a staff uh, and really had strong values and inclusion. We got training on co-teaching, we all embraced um, inclusion and wanting to bring students into our classroom and have the least restrictive environment as possible for our children. Uh, one of the best memories I have are actually of the kids. Um, one of my first years, I actually think my first year at Highcrest, uh, we uh, really treasured our field day at the end of the year in the spring. And we had all kinds of activities like the real tug of war. Um, we had races, we got potato sack races, and we did a lot of the traditional activities for this um, field day. Um, there was one in particular that involved two long wood sticks, um, actually logs, and they kind of look like this. And the kids had to um, put one right foot on one stick and a left foot on the other, and they moved along like this. Um, and so there were several people on a stick, if you can imagine, it's long, like a you know quite a big big log outside. And they had ropes, and all the kids, um, when it was their turn for this activity, had to yell right left, right, left, and they would go to the finish line. Well, my class came to do this activity and they were off on the side practicing before the big event. And they got on and they were saying right, left, like the other classes, and they quickly learned one of our students didn't know his left from his right. So one of the girls um, suggested they all huddle. So they all came together and they huddled. 
And one of the girls popped her head up and ran over and said, Mrs. Lippman, I need to go into the classroom and get something. So I thought, okay, great. Went into the class. She came back out with some electrical tape from our electricity unit, and there was blue color and red color. So they quickly cut strips of tape, made all the left shoes blue, made all the right shoes red, put a piece of tape on the toes, and instead of yelling out right, left, they yelled out red, blue, and my class won the race. And that is a very um, fond memory. I have an, a proud moment because that is exactly what our, our goal was and continues to be in the district. Um, the children, inclusion, problem solving creatively and coming up um, with solutions together and winning as teams. And that's what we're all about. And we continue to be about today. And I've actually taken a lot of that um, foundation with me as um, a leader in the district. So thank you, High Cross, for all the experiences and happy birthday. In 2020, you probably know me as Miss Bishop, sixth grade teacher at Highcrest. But in the year 2000, I was Ann Bishop, a sixth grader at Highcrest. In the year 2000, the Highcrest building was pretty different from today. World language, for example, was taught in temporary mobile classrooms. There was no blue hallway, no gym seat, and no outdoor classroom, although we did have two playgrounds at the time. Being a sixth grader, though, wasn't that different than it is today. We rocked the latest fashions, used cutting-edge technology, and listened to the coolest new music. In the year 2000 and in 2020, sixth grade at Highcrest Middle School is pretty great. Hi everyone, it is Sherry Kearns Enum, and I'm coming to you live from Walnut Junior High School. But in the background, across the field, is Highcrest, and I will always love Highcrest. I spent the bulk of my life at Highcrest um, in room 109, and um, a lot of my friends come from Highcrest on all my, my years there. Uh, but in terms of a favorite memory, um, something I'll never forget involves my original teaching partner, Robbie, whom many of you uh, knew and remember. Um, he was, without a doubt, probably the most creative person I've ever met. And one time we decided to convert my classroom into an Egyptian tomb. And it was really amazing. We had hieroglyphs on the walls. We had a mummy, tons of artifacts. You couldn't even tell that it was a classroom. Um, and uh, we had parents come through and classes come through and everyone was amazed and it was all because of Robbie. My favorite memories about Highcrest are the people. Uh, there was such a spirit and such an energy uh, in the building. Uh, it was such a fun place to work, and I think because it was so much fun, we made it a lot of fun for kids to be there as well. My favorite days were spirit days because everybody participated, and uh, especially the High Crest Heart written by the fabulous Jill Gontavinik. Uh That was always such a fun time, and we loved it, and the kids loved it. Um, it's just a really great place to be.
Bonjour, High Crest family and friends. Uh, je m'appelle Madame Fox. I'm Madame Fox, and uh, this is my 18th year here at High Crest Middle School. And in the year 2020, things look a little differently than they did 18 years ago. Um, when I was thinking about this, it dawned on me that the biggest physical change up until this year for me to witness has been Le Jardin, the garden, the prairie garden here at High Crest has gone through some amazing changes. Um, 18 years ago, there was pretty much just cement and a couple trees out here in this prairie garden. And I so uh, enjoyed watching our community come together and plant. Um, some amazing prairie plants, um, watching the butterflies come in in the late summer when we come back to school and just seeing the growth. Now it's gone through some recent changes as a result of the um, uh, construction to the building in the past year um, too. So we've got a little bit of a view to the new and beautiful learning commons, and still some amazing green space. Um, the mosaic that is on the far wall has been there as long as I have. Oof, makes me feel old. Um, my personal journey through the building has given me the opportunity to teach in four different locations. I started in room one, 104, um, and then I was moved in a year when we had an overflow of students, we converted the teacher's lounge into the French room, and uh, that was fun. Um, and then I moved to room 115 for several years, and this year, in 2020, I am teaching remotely out of the first floor con conference room as the French studio, so Le Studio Francais. So anyway, it's been a wonderful journey, but a couple things have remained consistent through my 20 or my, my 18 years here um, in the year 2020, just as back in my first days, the students have always been amazing. I've feel, felt so blessed to have super Frenchies with me every year. Um, and something else that hasn't changed over the t time that I've been here, go Bears. My fanship for the Bears, j'aime beaucoup, allez les Bears. Um, obviously today's game day and we'll see how they do. Anyway, that's my journey and my story here from High Crest Middle School in the year 2020. Au revoir! how much High Crest has changed, it really reminds me of that quote from Margaret Mead of never doubting that a thoughtful, committed group of citizens can change the world because it's the only thing that ever has. When I think about all of the students that have come through High Crest, it just makes me wonder how everyone is out there and changing the world. Hi, High Crest. This is Chris Konasek. This is my 18th year teaching here. Um, many things have changed over the years, including um, the kids getting to use one-on-one -on -one iPads and a lot of the technology that we now have that we didn't have many years ago. Um, some of the things that haven't changed, my love of the White Sox, look at that, the only one of the few teachers who still loves the White Sox, and my love of coming to work every day and working with all of the students that I see.
The only thing that would ever change that is if I win the Powerball, then you might not see me the next day. But I hope to be here for the rest of my career and finish out here because I love being here, love Highcrest, and love the kids who I work with. Thanks. Bye. Hi, I'm Mrs. Sloan. I'm Senora Cross. And we met on our first day at Highcrest nine years ago. A lot has changed at Highcrest, but some things haven't changed, like the amazing staff members and friendships yes. that you get to make there. It's been so fun meeting new people and maintaining our friendship that started our first day. Um, but a lot has changed at Highcrest since we started. One of the most amazing changes has been our new learning commons. Did you know that there was a committee of us who spent four years planning that new learning commons? It is the most student-centered and student-friendly place I can ever imagine, and we are so thankful that we have a space where students can come and work together, a whole maker space for them to be able to build and create and be creative, um, and it's been a really awesome addition to our school. And with that addition, we also got an addition of a World Language Wing with little classrooms in between where we can send our kids when we do projects. They have some extra space to work and record themselves. It's been so fun having World Language all together in one space. So we're so excited about today, and it's been really fun to watch all of the changes happen at Highcrest, and we can't wait to see what's still to come in the future. We love being Hawks. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for uh, watching that fun video and um, just celebrating all the many memories. And there were so many, so many more, um, so many more memories that we're even able to include in that, that video. It was just, it was so fun to put it together. And um, thanks to Dr. Fry for giving me a big box of pictures to go through and almost every story that was told by our staff members, I was able to match a picture too, which was so awesome too. Um, so we prepared, you know, now is the time that we've been, sorry, that we've been waiting for. For the past 20 years, this podium has held the time capsule from the year 2000. I would like to invite Dr. Fry up to the front, who is going to help us open the podium. He was here to seal the podium in 2000, and we're so ha happy that he could be here today to help us open it. So come on up, Dr. Fry. And um, so just so you know, we had to do, we had to figure out how to get it open. There was some trim around the edges and we unscrewed a couple of things. And so now if you want to just kind of push up on it, and I'll put my foot here. And there it is. Oh, thank you. All right. So um, if you look inside it, there are lots of different signatures and we will put this on display in the front lobby at High Press so people can see what's in here. But uh, let's dig in and let's see what's in here. Why don't you pull something out? <laughs> it kind of is. It's not the Powerball, but. <laughs> oh. This is a, this is a, um, a book. It says on the inside, this time capsule was suggested by Mrs. Lloyd, one of the teachers at High Park in 2000. It was built by students who signed their names in the inside of the capsule. Mr. Cooney, the social worker, helped students build the capsule. 
we hope that future students would see how high tech students felt and were in the year 2000. Hope you enjoy this. And it has, I think we don't have time to learn more, but it has signatures in here from all of the students in the classes, including some helping hands, which at that time, a month ago, we put up to encourage students to be helpful. So, so cool. We will put this on display, and maybe some of our uh, former students can find their what they wrote in their uh, picture. I'll take that if you want to grab some. They're having trouble hearing me. Uh, Zoom. The rubber band has disintegrated. <laughs> um, but let's see what this is. Julie, here's Lauren's story for the time capsule. Jan Lowe. I don't know if you remember Jan Lowe. She was a parent. Maybe Jan Lowe was her parent. She, she did things um, for us at the school. And um, I don't know if I can actually get this open without tearing it. But since we're it, since people are cold, maybe I should just move ahead, right? Sure. <laughs> Teachers would love to have used these empty manila folders. <laughs> I think perhaps what was in there were these newspapers. <laughs> these are time capsule surveys um, in which they wanted to know what the what the most popular books were, songs, poems, and TV. So they were Harry Potter series. Song was real slim shady. <laughs> Anybody know that song? Oh, yeah. Poem was Cheryl Silverstein poems, and the TV show was guess what? The Simpsons, of course. The movie was The Sixth Sense in Austin Tower. I have a whole story to tell you about just watching movies at overnight, but it's not going to matter. And the clothing is a uh, free print. And they're all the surveys are here. Oh, this is a poem to Julie. I'm not sure who it is. It's to Julie uh, or who it's from, but you'll have to figure that out. Maybe that'll be in the follow up news as well. Julie likes TV shows and is great at sports, so. <laughs> this is from a list of items by Maya Hoshima in uh, Robbie Lobster, Series 4. Well, I'm sorry to say we have a cassette tape here. <laughs> Anybody know how to play player? This is of the sixth grade band concert. It's the winter concert. Maybe we'll have to play that on the announcement for this year's school. Oh. Some, some pens. That's be useful, of course. Um, I think this is a pair of petite pants. Which <laughs> were the popular clothing of the time. Gel pens, those are nice. Don't worry, we're getting down to the bottom. Is this yours? No. <laughs> the high crest yearbook. We'll put this in the front display case too. You guys can look through it. Scratch board drawings. Anybody who had um, this button as a teacher, who did those in their class? Any of those? Gonna have long arms. <laughs> oh, more surveys. We took those with the other surveys. Remember these? <laughs> <laughs> We're putting it on eBay this yeah, afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> we need some PPE money. <laughs> This is a CD of the Winter Festival, December 9th, 1999. There's a whole list of things there. These are pictures from the time capsule construction and unveiling. 
I think you might have some of those that I've had from you too. Yeah, those, a few of those were at the end of the video. And last but not least, I think this is the first thing I put in, Harry Potter. Quick one. Thank you. And uh, there are a series of signatures inside if you want to take a look at those. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Fry, for helping us. You're and welcome. we're so excited that you could be here as a part of this day. Um, we'd like to thank you all for coming. We'll give you guys an opportunity to kind of walk by and peek in and socialize in a socially distant manner. Um, but we're so thankful that you could be here and appreciate you coming out on a chilly day. Have a great weekend and be safe if you're trick or treating.